Today we're going to be talking a bit about the vision of corporate sponsored coaching uh, or this corporate sponsored coach training program. And the focus of this entire dis <laughs> talk, uh, me just talking to the screen and talking to the camera, is to try to sell a vision of where I believe the the field of coaching is going to be going. And I think that we're seeing plenty of signs um, that indicate that this is where things will be going as a field. And there's some calls for change in a way. And yet there's some really exciting things in store, I believe, for those who are interested in becoming coaches. So this is going to be a bit of a lengthy discussion on the topic of corporate sponsored coaching as it relates to coach training with this organization. And as we get started, I, I think that a great way to begin is to think in terms of how do you coach the world's population? Right now we're, we're under 8 billion, but I'm just using 8 billion as a number here for reference. How do you coach 8 billion people? For one, you probably wouldn't coach you know, those who are extremely young. Uh, however, I hope you get the point. How do you actually coach nearly everyone in the world especially everyone in the world who would be interested in the developmental process that coaching provides, at least some time in their lives, for it to be a normal experience throughout the world. Right now, the International Coach Federation is revising uh, their global survey, or they are doing a new global survey, wrapping that process up from 2019 as we are now in 2020, and that will be released shortly. I'm assuming we'll probably see the entire uh, field of coaching of ICF credentialed coaches to be around 70,000 right now. If we're looking at a coach being able to coach maybe 50 people a year, 70,000 coaches, and that's, I, I think, somewhat ambitious, that's nowhere near what we need in terms of uh, reach and um, global, you know, global impact that we would love to see in the field of coaching one day. Now, how do you coach 8 billion people instead of hundreds of thousands of people a year or a million, uh, a few million a year? The only way you do that is if you change the nature of the game that we've been playing. The ICF, the International Coach Federation, has been in existence uh, 25 years as of the recording of this video. They're celebrating their 25th anniversary this year. Over this time, we've cultivated a, a very solid base and foundation of, of coaches. However, there is only 300-ish full accredited, uh, accredited coach training programs, around 70,000 ICF credit, uh, credentialed coaches. There is loads of space in the field right now. There is an incredible need for coaching worldwide as it is one of the most impactful ways to see a return on investment of learning and development for any individual and any corporation. It is a wonderful strong modality to help people grow and thrive as unique people carving out their own uh, path and, and writing their own story in terms of what their purpose is, where, where they want to be going with their lives, and how to, how to make the most of the time they have on this planet. How do you coach 8 billion people? You change the nature of the field. And that, I believe, is the, where corporate sponsored coaching comes in. This will be the future of the field in order to reach many, many millions and even billions of people. We must begin to pivot away from the model that we've seen over the past 25 years as the standard model in coaching. Now, I, I say kind of the standard model, not necessarily that it's um, the only model that's in existence right now by any means, but it has been seen as the normal way a coach grows in the field. First, they begin by uh, getting some coach training, and through that experience, they're able to call themselves a coach with some ethics behind that uh, as they gain some experience, and then they go to companies in their area and they sell coaching, often relying on some sort of platform already in place and a reputation for being an expert in the field, even though as a coach, they're trying to move away from being an expert advice giver or mentor or consultant. They are trying to implement coaching um, practices while still marketing to those who ha see them with a great reputation. Um, and that's the way a coach is able to make money and see a sustainable level of income 
while doing the coaching practice. So it's, this process is reliant on the coach. Uh, whatever experience they have, they get training, then they build a business, and then they are able to, to get credentials and further training in the field, and that allows them to do business better, maybe relying on other people that they pay directly in order to build their business with them or for them. This model is not bad in any, in any way, shape, or form. The only drawback of this model is its very small scalability. Every coach in this model has to focus on being both excellent coach and performer while also being great at marketing and sales, personal branding, and everything that goes along with that, including billing and, and holding holding their clients not only accountable to the actions that they um, they commit to, but also the, the money that they owe, owe the coach. It's a lot on the shoulders of every individual person. It's a, it's a process that does look at success being focused on the, the marketability of each individual coach. Now, many coaches thrive extremely well in this space. However, whether or not a coach thrives in this space, well, it, it's still going to be impacting their, their ability to just coach. So those who would love to focus on their, their skills of coaching and maybe coach training other coaches and, and speaking and, making, and just making an impact through the craft of coaching, this model is, is not serving them the best towards that end. It's also cutting out of the field a great majority who could be serving in the field who do not feel very qualified to sell, to do marketing. They don't feel like they have the technical prowess to build a website and to do the, um, the cart through the website to, to make things visually pleasing and competitive against every other coach in their area. This also builds into somewhat of a, uh, a scarcity mindset in the field of coaching, in my opinion, to where we're just, I, I love to, to talk about uh, Ben Zander's TED Talk. If you've not seen Ben Zander's TED Talk on classical music, please watch it. Like, pause this right now and go watch it. It's, it's wonderful, um, almost an analogy to every field of, uh, every, every field in the world, every career in the world where we are trying to make a connection, where we're trying to get people's attention for something that would be of value to them. And his idea is that, you know, we, f we focus in the field of classical music, his field, of can we just get another person, can we just get a little bit more, just 4% of people enjoying classical music, or 5% or 6%, just a little bit more, when in reality, everyone does enjoy classical music when it is connecting with them. And when we flip that switch of understanding, we might be able to flip the approach at promoting something like classical music. How does that relate to coaching? It's not about going from 70,000 coaches to 75,000 coaches in the next four years or 100,000 coaches in the next four years. In the next five years, we need to be cultivating 100,000 new coaches, 200,000 new coaches, a, a million new coaches. This is going to rely on thousands of coaches training others. Coach training organizations sprouting up everywhere, but they need to be focusing on a different model, a model that doesn't require the entrepreneurship being great uh, and very strong for each individual coach. Now there are other solutions. You don't just have to. Um, you don't just have to do sales. You don't have to run your own business. There are many coaching um, practices out there that are partnerships where coaches work together. To, to build some sort of um, joint platform that they're able to, you know, they're able to reap the benefits of the relationships and somewhat different sets of experience. And that has been a wonderful solution to many who aren't as interested in doing their own sales. They are in a partnership. There's still a limited growth to that because it's, it's generally a smaller scale. And it's not about, it's, it's not able to focus on the extreme levels of scalability that we will need to move towards over the next five to 10 years to, to begin coaching millions and millions and 
even billions of people in the next 25 years. So what other model do we have? The whole graphic here, I spent some time creating it. It's, it's pretty primitive. I don't know how valuable it is, but I do have it purposefully set as three parts serving a client. And in the future of the coaching field, this model, not my model, but what is happening in the coaching field where three parties are serving clients is going to be the standard approach. And very well, it, we're already at the cusp. We're already there where corporate sponsored coaching is now going to be the normative experience of coaching for anyone in the field or anyone who is getting coaching. It's going to be rarer and rarer, uh, less and less uh, the norm. For, for coaches to work exclusively as um, small business owners because of the amount of coaches that will be growing into this model. So what is this model? It is you have um, a company sponsor, and the company sponsor is invested in its success. It desires performance, retention, and organizational health. So on the one side, one of the three parts is the corporation, the company. It's the person, or not the person, it's the, the organization that is wanting to succeed and they realize that success is not about just adding a training and just having better leadership, but seeing every human being in that organization develop and grow and actually want to work. And while everyone knows this, it's very hard to understand how do we drive towards this end of helping everyone grow. And even the best of leaders, while they may want their teams to develop and grow, their focus is so, it has to be on outcomes that they can sometimes lose their way in supporting their individual team members and leaders uh, develop well and strengthen the entire organization. Because if the entire organization isn't growing, then it's going to, over time, fall into um, a, a death spiral, as uh, Jim Collins talks about. There's in order for an organization to grow, individuals have to be growing because if they're not growing, then they're starting to fade. They're starting to step away uh, from that organization. And that's gonna be shown in their lack of creativity and innovation, their lack of collaboration and uh, breakdown of communication and all the other shuns that are uh, common in the coaching space that you know the, the conversations we have are always about that stuff because we're common humanity, every company, Every corporation needs this kind of support. In fact, one of the main reasons that corporations have such a bad name and are seen as evil entities is really because they are a family of 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 500,000 people. And it's as if they're trying to organize a family reunion every day of the week. They're trying to do something together with each other. And it's, it's a communication nightmare. Corporations I would say are generally not evil. They're full of people, people who have a hard time communicating, working together in collaboration, innovating together, trusting one another, and everything else that a, a solid, healthy human needs in order to thor thoroughly flourish and thrive. Every corporation is invested in their people. They do desire their performance. That's why they pay them. And yet they need partners in the field of development to help their clients, their team members grow. And that leads us to coaches. And oftentimes corporations will partner with coaches or groups of coaches because the coach is invested in the individual client. Coaches are invested in the development of clients to help a company uh, or rather almost every heart of coach, uh, every coach's heart is dedicated to uh, the transformation of kind of humanity as a whole for us to get better at working with one another so that we can focus on the more important things of life. We are invested in the development of people to help them work with other people more effectively. And that is how we see organizations change and overall the world change. So corporations partnering with coaches and yet, the, the hard thing here is, how does a corporation trust a coach? How does a corporation invest all the time it's going to take to vet a coach, or all the time it's going to take to vet a, a group of 20 coaches who will come in and serve for a given period of time? That's so, it, it is a logistical challenge, because if we look at 
very large 50,000 person corporations, we don't need 20 coaches going in there and coaching the leadership. We need many coaches coaching the majority of every leader in that company, if not every, every leader, and if possible, even every employee. I mean, that would be the dream. We can't do that by individual brands or small business brands or even medium business brands. We must be transitioning towards large business brands that can scale without losing their soul and focus on the skills of coaching at a global scale. And that is where the field, I believe, is going, corporate-sponsored coaching. So this leads us to corporate-sponsored coaching companies. And they are, in my opinion, again, the future of where the field is going to be going. If we want very large corporations to be able to trust a brand and a learning and development solution that's going to cost them millions of dollars, they need to be able to trust a group, an entire group of, let's say, 1,000, 10,000 coaches who would be able to serve their hundreds of thousands of team members. This is how we go ahead and begin to move the needle more and more over towards the billions of people being coached only through very large brands who focus on quality. They focus yet also on scalability without losing their soul. So they are a corporation, but a corporation of coaches led by great leadership. And uh, they, you know, the, the organization is there to help the field of coaching thrive, their coaches do well, so that the companies that are being served can also um, grow and do well. This idea of the field of coaching needing corporate sponsored coach organizations, corporate sponsored coaches that are used to working within these types of organizations, and corporations that are able to trust the branding, the large scale branding. This is not only where things are going, but where things have been going over the past few years. So this is the 2016 ICF Global Coaching Study. Uh, the 2020 is going to be coming out. And since this time, uh, a few years ago, we had 53% of all coaching that was being done in the world is sponsored coaching, where someone else is paying for it. And now, uh, as we look for the next, um, you know, the next version of this study, we're probably going to see this number edging closer and closer to 60%, because it's just natural that Companies are going to want to be able to invest in coaching at scale so that more and more of their team members are able to, to experience the growth and development that comes through the process. That cannot happen again just with individual business uh, branding, small business branding, or medium business branding, but only with large business branding that is going to help con create those connections uh, between the coaches and uh, the organizations. But why is all this happening? If it's just happening so that people, more people could get paid, that's of course not what, what the field needs to be after. If it's just a cash grab of, of large scale organizations to get a cut of the deal as the field of coaching grows, that's also not what we're after. What we're after is for coaches to be able to focus on their coaching, for corporations to be able to trust the process and be almost infected by the coaching spirit all the way throughout their organization. And these coach train or these uh, corporate sponsored coaching organizations to cultivate this field as a whole by making those connections and to create trust between coaches and corporations. All of this is in service of the of the client. If clients have this structure in place, more clients are served globally. And that's that's been my experience over the past eight years being a coach. I've worked organizationally. And I have been so pleased with my life. It's not been easy. My starting experience was a bit, a bit rough at times, but I was very thankful for what I learned from it. However, I've worked out here in the middle of nowhere, uh, America. My internet comes from a grain silo a few miles south of me. And yet I get to work with people all over the world I get to be a part of helping train people all over the world and supporting the development of the field. And I don't have to worry about my own business. I mean, clearly I'm going to be, be doing a bit of business ownership with this training program. But even still, I trust that even the nature of coach training programs is going to flip soon. That's why I'm building this, because I do not believe that it's going to be nearly as hard of a sell as it has been. 
at, again, can we just get a few more coaches in the coach training program is going to become we need more coach trainers because the field needs more coaches and the market demand is demanding that we have more coaches ready. We are there. Large, large scale efforts are being experienced and, and put together by these great coaching organizations. It's time to, to focus on this global approach and get into the field as a corporate sponsored coaching. These are my opinions, but this is how I see the future, that a coach trains and through that training, they gain entry experience as a, you know, a, a beginner coach, being given guidance and being given feedback, being watched to make sure there are no red flags, trained to work ethically, trained to work effectively according to a structure and according to feedback that they've get, gotten in the training. So thorough training, then beginning experience in the field that's guided through that, being able to have a credential or earn a credential. And as they go from the ICFs or International Coach Federation's associate level coach certification or the uh, professional certification or even all the way to the master certified coach credential, as they're moving down that path, somewhere along there, they can say to themselves, oh, you know, I would like to run my own business. Or they can continue down this path of corporate sponsored coaching or maybe a mix. But the key distinction here is that they do not have to succeed as a small business owner in order to succeed as a coach. They can succeed as a coach with a corporate sponsored coaching organization and thereby make the impact that they want with their work. And in the future, maybe based on the platform that they've garnered, they can build their own business, but they don't have to. This one, instead of being a marketability driven approach that is really focused on our branding and focused on creating models that are unique to us as an organization or as an individual coach, creating our acronyms, there's an infinite amount of coaching acronyms out there. Instead of that type of approach, we get to focus on the practice of coaching. Again, getting back to the idea of what kind of coach training this is, this is the idea of coach, uh, sp uh, corporate sponsored coach training. We want to help coaches grow as we grow the field of coaches of coaching. Hope I didn't drone on too long. I'm very excited about what this all becomes. And whether or not you join this company as part of, or you know, join this type of training as part of your development into the field, it's, it's not about what company you go with as much anymore. It's that you get very solid ACTP or fully accredited coach training program training, and that you begin reaching out to different opportunities, whether that's running your own business or reaching out to, to partner groups of coaches or something, something like this of corporate sponsored coaching. I hope this is helpful in setting the stage, setting the vision of where we believe the field of coaching is going to be going and where your place might be in it. I hope it uh, gives you your own vision of how you can make an impact. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, this might have sounded like a really bad infomercial. Um, you should even have like this really cheesy price tag to the coach training. Um, but it's not cheesy. It's, it's, not, it's not fake. It's amazing how many people are able to work remotely in the world now and how that ability to work remotely is, is making a bigger impact. You're just living in a whole different world and we need to adapt. So be a part of that adapt adaptation if you're interested in the coaching field. Uh, find a great coach training program that helps you begin to make an impact right off the bat. If you want to run your own business, go for it. But there's way, there are other options now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Hope this is helpful.